Hi, welcome. What I thought I'd do today is actually take you through something that I've done in class, but I'm not sure I've done it right, which is to explain how I get a bottom-up beta for a business. So I'm going to take the example of Disney, where I looked at the beta for the movie business and go through the steps one step at a time so you can see the sequence that I use and maybe disagree with me on some steps. And as you can see, in some of these steps, you're going to have to make some choices which might give you a slightly different number. So here's my task. Disney, one of the businesses that Disney is in is in the movie business, and I want to get a beta for being in the movie business. So the first step was to go find publicly traded companies in the movie business. I used S&P Capital IQ, and I used entertainment production companies as my, as my business because those are the primary movie companies. And initially, I stayed with just the U.S. I ended up with a sample of about 10 companies. Is it a big enough sample? I mean, I could expand this to include non-U.S. Non companies, and the sample could probably increase fivefold. But I'm going to stay with just this sample because 10 companies, I think, is enough for me to get a beta. And I don't want to go look for, looking for trouble when I don't need to. Incidentally, that's a choice you, you will have to make depending on the sample size you get. If I'd got only three companies at this stage, I might have thought differently. So here are the four pieces of information. Actually, five pieces of information that I pulled up for each of these companies. First, I pulled up the beta, and Capital IQ gives lots of different choices. I used the, the two-year beta, and any time you see a beta on Capital IQ or Bloomberg or any other service, you can assume it's levered because nobody ever reports an unlevered beta directly. So the beta that you're going to see is a regression beta, and the levered beta is therefore the regression beta that I found for each of these companies. So that's in column E. In column F, I've got the market capitalization, the most recent market value of equity for each of these companies. In column G, I have the total debt outstanding for each of these companies. In column H, I have the cash. And so these are the total cash balance for each of these companies. In the last column, I have the revenues for each of these companies. Not so much an issue when I compute betas, but may be useful elsewhere in this process. So those are the five pieces of information I need to get this process going. So here's the first step. So the first step is getting the raw data. The second step is I want to compute some very basic ratios. And again, I don't want to be mysterious. There are three ratios specifically that I want to compute. The first is my gross debt to equity ratio. What is that? That's total debt divided by market equity. So if I take the total debt of 98.89 for SFX and divide it by the market cap of 738.8, I get a debt to equity ratio of 13.39%. So it's debt divided by equity is gross debt to equity. I then computed two other dollar values. One I call firm value, the other is enterprise value. Let me explain what they measure and why they're different. The firm value is just the debt plus the equity, so market cap plus debt. So think of that as a sum of the, the, of the liability side of the balance sheet in a financial balance sheet. It's debt plus equity. I also net cash out. So if I take that debt plus equity and I subtract out the cash balance, so basically it's this plus this, minus the cash, I get what's called enterprise value. You're saying, what is that measuring? That's actually measuring what the market thinks the operating business of this company is worth, rather than the entire company. Because remember, the company has cash, so the value of the company is inflated by the cash. I'm taking out the effect of cash. Here's the first ratio I compute. I look at how much cash the company has as a percentage of its value. So I take the cash balance, divide by the firm value, and end up with a percentage value of 17.14%. SFX Entertainment is about 17% cash, 83% movies. So basically, that's to measure how much of this company is cash. I also compute what the enterprise value is as a multiple of revenues. I'm not going to use that for my levered beta calculation, but I'm trying to get a sense of, in this business, how much is the market valuing a typical company at? And for SFX, the value of the company, which is the enterprise value, value of the operating assets, is about 11.2 times the revenues. So basically, I have the debt-to-equity ratio for each firm, the cash as a percentage of firm value, and enterprise value. Incidentally, if you want to compute a net debt ratio, all you need to do is open a column and compute what's called the net debt debt-to-equity ratio. And what that will be then is the gross debt, sorry, It'll be the gross total debt minus the cash divided by market cap. 
And be ready to accept the fact that that, so that's going to be a percentage number. So let me make that into a percentage number. And be and that number can be negative because if your cash exceeds your total debt, it is going to be negative. Leave it as is. If you want to work with net debt ratios, you've got to be willing to accept the fact that sometimes they'll be negative. So in this in this spreadsheet, all I'm doing is computing ratios. The debt to equity ratio, the cash as a percent of firm value, and the enterprise value to sales ratio. Step three, I compute some basic statistics. In particular, I com and very basic statistics, I compute the average for each of the numbers. In this case, the debt to equity, the cash, and the enterprise value. I also compute the median. The reason I do that is not financial, it's statistical. And it's because I have outliers, at least on a couple of my variables. In the case of debt, it's a 551 and the 477% pushing up my gross debt to equity. So I compute the median values for the regression beta, the gross debt to equity, the cash as a percent of firm value, and the enterprise value to sales ratios. Now I'm almost ready to go. Step four, I want to first compute the unlevered beta for each company. Let me emphasize again, unlevered beta for each company. This is not for the movie business yet, but this is the unlevered beta for company. Okay. Now what is that? Basically I take the levered beta, so it's 1.12, and I unlever it using a 40% tax rate and the gross debt to equity ratio that you see there. So it'll be 1.12, if you want the ratio, 1.12 divided by 1 plus 1 minus the tax rate, which I'm using 40% for, times 1339. And if you use that, you should come up with an unlevered beta for the company. I can do that for each company. And I can actually get a median value across the company. So that's one way to do an unlevered beta for a company, is do each company separately and take a median value. I am a little leery on doing that because especially if you look at these very high debt to equity ratios and the fact that the regression beta is noisy, I'm a little reluctant to do this computation in each company. I'm going to take the lazy way out, and in this case, the lazy way out might actually give you a better answer. I take those average betas and median betas that I compute in the average debt to equity and the median. I compute an unlevered beta using those values. So let me explain again how this would work. So if I took the 1.24, which is the median regression beta, and divided by 1 plus, I'm sorry, 1 plus 1 minus 0.4 times 0 0.2706. There should be a, sorry, there should be another uh, bracket outside. If I do that, then I should get 1.0668. So if you think about why these numbers are different, in one case, I'm taking the unlevered betas for each company and taking the median. In the other case, I'm just taking the median values and computing one unlevered beta. I prefer the latter, but again, I don't feel strongly about it. If you prefer the former, go for it. Last step. I'm not interested in getting an unlevered beta for a movie company. I want an unlevered beta for the movie business. So here's what I did for the final stage. I take the cash as a person of firm value, and here's the way to think about it. Remember I said SFX is about 83% movies, about 17% cash. The unlevered beta for the company is 1.0367, but given that that 17% that's invested in cash has a beta of zero, then the beta of the movie business should be much higher, right? So if you want to see this, what I'm basically saying is I'm, it's in two businesses. So let's call the first business the movie business, the second business the cash business. So this is SFX. Okay. It's got about 82.86% in the movie business, 17.14% in the cash business. The beta for the company overall is 1.0367, right? The beta for the movie business is zero. So the question I'm asking is what is this? So let's solve for that, right? So let's set that as the unlevered beta of the movie business. That's what I'm solving for. And we work through the algebra. It works out that if I take 1.0367 and divide by 0.8286, I'm going to end up with an unlevered beta for SFX of 1.2512. So you see what I'm doing? I'm essentially taking the company down 
breaking it down into the movie business and the cash business and trying to extract just the unlevered beta for the movie business. Again, I can do this for each company separately and take a median value across all of them, which is 1.0956. Or I can do it all with the median values or the average value. So in, the, in this case, I could take the 1.660668 and clear it, clean it up, in, which in this case will just be dividing the 1.0668 by 1 minus 0 0.0296 and end up with one unlevered beta for the business using the median values. Notice the numbers are pretty close. That's why I'm not going to make this a big issue. If you prefer to unlever each company separately and take a median across those values, I'm okay with that. I just prefer the second approach where I use the median values for everything. So the end game here is I'm going to end up with an unlevered beta of 1.0993 for the movie business. So let's review. I started with the median regression beta 1.24. So that's just the regression beta pulled off my raw data set. I unlevered it using a gross debt to equity ratio of 27.06%. The unlevered beta I get for the movie for a movie company is 1.0668. But 2.96% of a typical movie company's cash, I clean up for that cash, I end up with an unlevered beta 1.0993 for being in the movie business. And incidentally, along the way, I also computed that the typical movie company trades at 3.05 times revenues. And all of that came from taking that raw data and working with it. So give it your best shot. Pick a sector. In fact, what might work best is pick the comp you know, take your company, take a business it's in, and try to do this on your, on your own. It's not rocket science. I'm not inventing something new. I'm drawing on a very basic statistical theorem, which is the law of large numbers, to get both a more precise estimate of beta for a company and a more forward-looking estimate, while getting the bonus of having betas by business and cost of equity by business. I hope this session helped. Thank you very much for listening.